Hello and welcome to a fresh episode of Platypod Perspectives, where each time we find an amazing shot, an amazing photograph like this one. This is absolutely incredible. And we're going to tell you, actually, the guy who took this shot is going to tell you how he got it and all the special things that went into capturing this amazing image. The gentleman's name is Lee Hurd. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this is an incredible thing. First of all, you are a professional sports photographer. Do you do things besides sports as part of your professional photography stuff? Um, we actually shoot a little bit of everything from weddings to uh, boating events, um, nautical racing, things of that nature. So we're kind of a one-stop shop for any kind of media any company would want to have. Okay, very cool. So uh, the sports stuff, though, that is really intriguing. And I've seen a number of your shots lately. And you, you sent, thank you for sending a bunch to uh, Platypod, because we used some in a recent presentation at uh, Kelby One. And then also, um, I got to pick one of my favorite shots, and that shot is this one. What an incredible, incredible shot. And then you also told us a little bit about the behind the scenes. And that's really what I'd like to dive into. How did you capture that shot in particular? Uh, with this specific shot, um, I was actually on the other end of the end zone. Um, at most NCAA events, and especially um, some of the major league events, um, most even the bigger publications only get one photo credential at each event. Uh, this specific one was at the Orange Bowl, which uh, happens at Miami Gardens at the Hard Rock uh, Stadium down there. Um, with that event, I kind of have to gamble. Should I be on this side of the end zone or should I be on this side of the end zone? So I'll put my remote camera on the opposing side. Um, then it, when I can see the play transpiring a certain way um, and through several hours of uh, watching film over specific teams, I can kind of get a grasp of, okay, I know which way they're going to go and what they're going to do. Um, part of it that plays into this factor is luck, which the shot had a whole lot of luck into it. Um, with the remote uh, camera setups, you typically want to shoot wide, especially if you're shooting with a camera like mine is a Nikon Z9. Um, it offers almost 50 megapixels of, um, of resolution, so you can crop in a considerable amount. Um, the key factor is, is as, long as, it's in, as long as it's in focus, that's the biggest key. Um, and how I attain that most of the time is this specific shot. I've placed the back left pylon, um, hoping to you know, capture either maybe a run at the pylon or either an over, over the shoulder uh, pass. Um, just lucked up with this one. Um, happened to be at the right place at the right time. Um, but it also I shot about 400 images, um, shooting 30 frames per second. Um, and that was the one image to where he crossed the focal plane to where it was in focus. Just so happened, ball was almost at him. Um, and there's a lot of skill that is involved with this as well. You kind of have to know exactly where they might place the ball. Typically, whenever I set up a camera that's a remote camera to end zone, if it's for a pass play, I typically pre-focus that shot about halfway into the end zone, um, just to where I have an ideal um focal plane to where if they come across that plane, um, I actually get it in focus pretty well. That's something that I hadn't ever really thought about is all the pre-focus and, and the fact that um, I, I'm not a sports shooter. And if I ever do or did shoot sports, it's always handheld and, and I'm doing focus tracking and follow focus and and hoping that I'm capturing something. But when a professional like yourself does this, there are, there are some things that I hadn't thought about. Let's talk a little bit about that remote trigger and what it's like. How does it work for you? Have you been you know, trying different units and you found a favorite? And then any special remote trigger advice you might give to people that are looking at getting into this? Um, the biggest kind of name in the game is Pocket Wizard. Um, that's the units I actually specifically use. Um, just their form factor is very small. Uh, it's very intuitive. Um, it's very easy to set up. Um, that's the trigger of choice that I've used so far. Um, it's been the best option I've had out there as far as remotely triggering the camera itself. Um, now, I have experimented around with different camera controls. Um, I've been floating around different ideas for 
uh, tripod heads. Um, I've actually put uh, my camera on a gimbal and then mounted that to the platypod, which works out wonderfully. And most people don't have the ability to set up a remote camera on a sideline for NCA events because they don't allow tripods. But with a the platypod, they will allow that. So that's perfect, perfect form factor there. Um, but with mounting a actual gimbal itself to the platypod, mounts perfectly to the bottom, and I can be on one side of the end zone controlling the entire where the camera's pointed at, uh, working the auto, you know, the follow focus. And then if I see a pass coming that way, I can activate the trigger as well. That's really incredible to have that kind of control at a distance. And you really do have to know the game. Did it take a lot to get credentialed to be able to do this kind of work? Uh, for NCA work and above, um, it, it takes a lot of hard work to actually get to that level. Um, I've had that question asked me probably a thousand times of how could I reach that level? Um, the best way to do that is to start work for some of your smaller newspapers, then work your way up to the larger newspapers. Um, and then as you hone your skills in the process, hone your workflow, um, you can work towards more like the USA Today sports, things of that nature, which require a certain skills trait and um, certain kind of polished workflow. What about the device itself? You know, we, we all see in football where uh, plays happen and the, the players land on people, on benches, on pylons, on everything. Have you had problems with them hitting your camera, landing on your camera? What is that all about? Is there a way to prevent it? Um, not, on, not only players, but uh, f fellow photographers as well. Funny story. Um, and you had no uh, background on this, the camera right after this shot, probably about a half a second after he caught this ball, the cameraman directly to the right knocked over the remote camera. So he propped it back up and I just kept hitting the uh, trigger button as well. So that's always a uh, constant um, thought whenever you're on a sideline, especially with how fast paced um, an NCAA or a professional game will go. Um, we've had several co close calls over the years. So I've, I've actually been, um, jumped over by a couple players because I'm usually that one photographer that just stands there and gets the shot. That's fantastic. Okay, so what about um, what about the settings on the camera itself? What kinds of things do you uh, prepare for with this? Um, it's all situationally based, um, and depending upon the sport, uh, where I place the camera, but in the time of day. But generally, for some of your sports, you're wanting to not shoot at like an f2.8, which has a very, very short focal distance. Um, with the advent of several different features with Lightroom, um, where you can blur the background, mimic the look of being at f2.8, uh, which you know has its pros and cons. Um, if you bump up to say an f5.6, or either even probably about an f8, it'll allow you to actually uh, get more items in focus. It gives you a little bit more leeway with getting the shot. Um, as always with any any kind of sporting event, I usually shoot around um, a thousandth of a second or more, depending upon light. Um, if it's a day game, I'll bump that up a little bit faster because the farther up you get to the major leagues, the faster the players are. So you have to bump your shutter speed up as well. That's something I hadn't thought about, that the major leagues are actually literally faster. You just wouldn't think that. I that's very interesting. Well, Lee, this has been eye-opening for me, and I'm sure it's going to help an awful lot of aspiring sports photographers. So my question to you is, how can people learn more from you or see more of your work, find out more about you and what you do? Um, you can actually look at most of our work on our Instagram. That's where we the most post the most. Um, it's Herd Media Group on Instagram. Very good. Herd Media Group on Instagram. Very good. Lee, thank you so much for spending the time today. Thanks for sending all these great images along and giving us the behind the scenes fantastic information. Folks, I do encourage you to follow Lee and track his work because he's got amazing, amazing work. And I think it's wonderful that he took the time to be able to share some of that with us today and give us the behind the scenes for that. You know, that's what this this show is all about platypod perspectives bring you an amazing image like this one 
and then talk to the fantastic photographer behind it. And you never know who might be our next guest on Platypod Perspectives. We'll see you next time. <laughs>